Hi, this is Rachel, and we're going to look at rearranging equations. So I have three equations to rearrange here, and I'm going to do this one, then this one, then this one. So the reason I'm rearranging these equations is to find out what x is. So there are a number of ways I can find x. So for example, this first one, I'm saying x plus 5 equals 7. Now I could just say to myself, what plus 5 equals 7? And that might give me the answer straight away. However, sometimes for more complicated ones, like this one here, I may have to rearrange my equation in order to get x by itself, which will give me an answer. So let's have a look at this one. So when we're rearranging equations, the first thing I want to do is try and get x by itself. So currently on the left, I have x plus 5. Now I want to get rid of that 5, but I can't just scribble it out and pretend it doesn't exist. What I can do is I can take away 5 from that side. Now, I can't just take away 5 from one side. I have to take away 5 from both sides. So I need to do the same to both sides whenever I'm rearranging equations. OK, so let's have a look at what that gives us. So now I've got x plus 5 and I've taken away 5, which leaves me just with x. And then on the right, that gives me 7 minus 5. Now I know that 7 minus 5 is 2. And so I can find that x equals 2. So I'm doing the opposite of whatever is in the equation to get rid of these terms. So I've gotten rid of that 5 by taking away 5, because it's a plus 5 there. Let's have a look at this next one. So down here, we've got 2 equals 10 divided by x. So there are a couple of ways about going of going about this one. Um, the first way is using a simple switching method. Um, this is something that you can do if you can remember to do it. It's a perfectly valid piece of working, but I'll also show you the longer way as well. So the switching method, when we have something that looks like this, where we've got something on the left of the equals, and then a number, or it could be letters, divided by something else, I can switch what's on the left of the equals with what's on the bottom. So I can switch these, and that will give me x equals 10 divided by 2. And that's a perfectly valid thing to do. It works out mathematically. If you're someone who prefers the longer method, then we can use this method we used up here for this. So if I've got 2 equals 10 over x again. Now the longer method, I want this x on its own. Now this is difficult to do with it in its current form, so what I want to do is move x over onto the left. So currently, on the right, this is a divide by x. So I want to do the opposite to get rid of it from the right hand side and move it to the left. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And so now on the left, I've got 2 times x, or 2x. And on the right, I've gotten rid of that x. So it's now 10. So I've now got 2x plus 10. This still doesn't give me x on its own. I want to get rid of this 2. So this is 2 times x. So to get rid of the 2, I divide. So I'm dividing both sides by 2. 2x divided by 2 is just x. And on this side, I've got 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And over here, I stopped before getting to the final answer, but you can see I've also got 10 divided by 2. So again, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that's two ways of getting to the answer when we have something that looks like this.
And it doesn't just have to be numbers and letters, it could be, for example, trigonometric functions, um, speed time equations, anything like that. Okay, let's have a look at this last one up here. So this one is a bit more complex. We've got multiple terms and we've got a squared here. And so let's have a go at solving this. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the easy parts first. So let's get rid of this one. This one is standing alone. It's not really doing anything. So I'm going to take away that one. So this is a, an extra plus one that's on this side. So I'm taking away one from both sides, leaving me on the left, 3x squared, and on the right, 13 minus 1, which is 12. Okay. So now on the left, I've got 3 times x squared, because remember that's what this means. And on the right, I've got 12. Now my goal is to get x on its own, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 3 because this is a three times, therefore I can divide. So I'm dividing both sides by three. And that gives me on the left, three x squared divided by three, which is x squared. And on the right, 12 divided by three, which is four. Okay, so now what I've got my x on the left and 4 on the right, but this is still not quite x on its own, this is still an x squared. So I'm going to do the opposite of a squared, which is a square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. So if I square root a square number, that gives me just the number itself. And then the square root of 4 is so my value for x in this equation is 2.